How's my hair? Good. Welcome back, friends. It's Anders. Today's video is a last minute gift guide for all of you procrastinators out there. Basically anybody who's like me, because the holidays are here. I've got a good collection here, number of things that I like to use behind my bar. You could also look at this video as kind of a bar basics. So if you are looking to just upgrade your own bar, it would work for that too. All right. Also, be sure to stick around to the end because I have some exciting news about volume two of our cocktail art prints. More on that later. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes. And let's go, we're not making anything, sorry. Let's go talk holiday gifts for the bar. To the bar. Today's video is sponsored by Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is an online wine subscription that pairs you with bottles of wine you are going to love. All you do is go online, fill out a quiz, sit back, you wait, you get your wine, and you enjoy it. Today, I am here to talk about their holiday wine bundles. They've got a few to choose from. I went with the hosting and toasting bundle. This bundle in particular has two reds, a couple of whites, a rosé, and a bottle of celebratory bubbles. There's a card in here along with the wine, and on the back of the card is a mulled wine recipe. How convenient. But also on the bottom half of that card are seasonal wine pairings. So you can pair it with food. Just so happens I've got some party food here for myself and all the hundreds of thousands of guests that are gonna be here any moment. Just like any of the Bright Cellars boxes, each bundle comes with info cards. Each card corresponds with a bottle of wine. It tells you the varietal, where it's from, tasting notes, serving temperature, alcohol percentage, every little thing. So now let's uh, put this to the test. I am going to try a bottle of wine I've never tasted before. This pretty blue one right here. The Azuli Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile, 2021. Mm. Oh, I like that. I get the cherry, definitely. I get the clove, actually. Pairings, grilled tri-tip or flank steak, and potato and cheese pierogies. I don't have either of those, but it is working well with what I've got. And I'm guessing it will work well with a raspberry cookie. Ooh. So you can do this with friends. Click the link down below, use code ANDERS15, and get 15% off any holiday bundle between four and 12 bottles. Happy holidays. Thank you, Bright Sellers. Onto the film. First up, we have glassware. I love glassware. Most people that are making drinks have a thing for glassware. I think there are really only three types of glasses that I would consider essential for your bar. Those are the low ball or rocks glass, the high ball or Collins glass, and the stemmed glassware or up glass. The rocks glass is perfect for old fashions, really anything that you're gonna serve on the rocks or neat like whiskey neat. I've got two here that are very beautiful. They both happen to be made by Visky. I am affiliated with Visky, so click on the link down below if you want, but you certainly don't have to. You can find lowball glasses pretty much anywhere. The highball glasses are good for long drinks that are gonna be a bit more refreshing. They're good for bubbly drinks, fizzes. They're good for mojitos. If your friend is into tiki drinks, consider a tropical highball. These are gonna be a little bit bigger because you have to hold crushed ice and those tropical drinks have a lot more ingredients. They tend to be larger volume. And then we have the stem glassware. These are for drinks that you enjoy without ice, but you wanna keep them chilled so the stem keeps your hand away from the drink. These do come in different shapes and designs. This is a Nick and Nora. This is a coupe. I use both of these on the channel quite a bit. So you pick whatever resonates with you. I do have something to say about size, however. Mainly the stem glassware for whatever reason, people make the glasses huge. And if your your friend is making classic cocktails, those cocktails are gonna look really tiny in that massive glass. So consider that. This coupe of mine, which is a favorite, is five and a half ounces. And then of course I do have a small glass, which leads me to this thing, which makes me wanna tell you, consider visiting your local thrift shop. I got this one as an example for, I don't know, about a dollar, two dollars. I got a set of six and they're unique. Obviously I can't leave a link for them, but you can go to your thrift shop and see what there is. You might be surprised. There are beautiful finds for dirt cheap. So that's it for glassware. On to whatever's next. Next, we have the bar tools. I'm picky about my bar tools. I want you to be picky too, because it does affect the experience. If you are messing around with janky tools, you're gonna give up on the cocktail experience. I broke this up into two categories, stirred cocktails and shaken cocktails. First up are the stirred, and for that, 
the first thing I would consider is a nice mixing glass. It's not overly expensive. It looks really good. Things to look for. Number one, you want a heavy, sturdy base so that it doesn't tip over and make a mess. Obviously, you want something that is substantial. Uh, also, another thing I look for is a mixing glass that is seamless. Sometimes there is a seam that runs vertically in the glass and when you stir, it clicks every time you go around. This is maybe just me, just try it. When there is something in there that clicks, it, it, it grinds my gears. I prefer to have a mixing glass that is nice and smooth and an enjoyable stirring experience. I will leave a link for this down below if you want to just go with the one that I have. With the mixing glass, you are gonna want a julep strainer. This is gonna help you filter off the ice when pouring the cocktail. The spoon, things to look for in a spoon is a low profile spiral. Some of the cheaper ones have a fat spiral that chews up your finger when you're stirring with it. So don't skimp on the spoon. Cocktail Kingdom makes a good one, Visky makes good ones. There are good ones out there. The spoon, the strainer, the mixing glass, you could get these as a set or individually, however you wanna do it, it's up to you. Onto the shaking set. This is where things can get a little tricky. So I have two kinds of shaking tins in front of me. I've got the cobbler shaker, which is very classic, and a Boston shaker specifically a tin on tin Boston shaker. Sometimes they come with a glass pint glass, but I prefer the tin because there's less chance of breakage. These are made by Corico, uh, made by Cocktail Kingdom. And then there is the cobbler shaker, which is a real classic look. A lot of people really like this a lot. And what's nice is it comes with a built-in strainer. If you do get a Boston shaker, which I tend to use way more often, you are gonna want a Hawthorne strainer which goes right on top. It's for filtering off the cocktail. Pro tip, it also works on the mixing glass. So you don't have to get the julep strainer. You could just get the Hawthorne if you were to only get one. I would also get a fine mesh strainer. These are cheap, but it's really nice for double straining your cocktails. And of course, every bartender should have a jigger. These come in different styles. There's Japanese jiggers, this one, but not that expensive from OXO. This would be a great stocking stuffer if you want. Again, you can buy these individually if you want. You can buy them as a set. I would recommend staying away from those really cheap $15, $20 all-inclusive cocktail sets that are usually a little miniature. You find them on Amazon and they are really cheaply made. They usually come with a, a muddler that is just a piece of plastic. They come with a knife that is really dangerous and everything falls apart. I've actually had a few of them over the years that have been gifted to me and I wish I could show you, but I threw them all away. That's not to say you can't get a cocktail tool kit. This cobbler shaker came in a four piece mixology set and it's quality. Don't throw your money away on the cheap ones. So there it is, tools. Now, I'm gonna move on to books, cocktail books. There are some really good ones out there. I can't tell you all the cocktail books. We actually did an episode a while back on cocktail books, but for this last minute gift idea, here's some things to think about. All right, so if you wanna get new releases, first on the list is Steve the Bartender's Cocktail Guide. This is my buddy, and he made a book. Highly recommend it, filled with recipes. It's got some great tips beautiful pictures, pick one up and tell them I say hi. If you are looking for a more classic cocktail book, the Savoy cocktail book has been my go-to for a long, long time. I've referred to this book many times on the channel. It's loaded with cocktail recipes, all classics, obviously it's from the 1930s. Then for the tropical drink lover, highly recommend Smuggler's Cove by Martin Kate and Rebecca Kate. This will also tell you everything you need to know to get started in the world of rum. So for rum fans, definitely check out this book. Uh, for the more in-depth scientific type, I would recommend Liquid Intelligence by Dave Arnold. It's filled with all kinds of various scientific techniques and breaks everything down like nitro muddling and blender muddling. Speaking of nerd out, this is one if you are needing a reference book, it has become a go-to for me. It's massive. This is the Oxford Companion to Spirits and Cocktails. This is a dictionary. And it's perfect if you are planning and researching cocktails for a YouTube channel. I found it to be very helpful. See, I even have little, little markers on it. It's really in depth. It's not for the, the layman. That's what I would say for books. Of course, there are many, many more. Check out my video on cocktail books if you want, but we are gonna keep moving on. So. Next up are bottles. No matter how much stuff your friend has behind their bar, 
the alcohol disappears. If they're doing it right, that alcohol is gonna go away. There are a couple different things you can do here. You could buy them a base spirit that they can use. Uh, just quick examples, gin, I've got Plymouth, Rittenhouse Rye, and rum, Appleton Estates. These are some of my go-tos, but if you want tequila, if you want vodka, these are just good things, good staples to have behind the bar. Or if you want, you can get modifiers like vermouth, this is my go-to sweet vermouth, Koki Vermouth de Torino, bitters, Angostura bitters, or a liqueur, maybe uh, an orange liqueur. If they're mixing up classic cocktails, these are ingredients that they're definitely gonna be using. Or maybe they are just wanting to sip on something neat. I'm sipping on this new one, new to me, called Westland American Single Malt Whiskey, which I really like. This was sent to me as a sample. I'm not sponsored, but I wanted to give them a shout out because it's really good. It's got a little peatiness to it. Another one that I like is Redbreast 12 Year. This is one of my go-to whiskeys for sipping. Very smooth. And if you're not into whiskey, then maybe you like to sip on rum. Real McCoy 12 Year is a favorite of mine, but of course there are a number of great bottles out there. And check out my collection on Kiriata. I try to keep it updated so it's a good reference for what I'm using on the channel. Now, some stocking stuffers for your bartending friend. Some nice cherries are always a good thing. These are Amarena cherries. Luxardo makes some good ones as well. And these are actually rather expensive. They range from 10 to $25, depending on the size jar you get, but they're really good. So this is not just a throwaway gift. This is actually a nice gift to give. Or cocktail syrups. Now I always, recommend making your own, and I stand by that. But you can, if you want, get store-bought, in which case I recommend Library & Company. There is a wide range of syrups that you can get, and they make great stocking stuffers. So that concludes our list. And as I said, I will try to leave links for everything down below. On to the announcement. We have released round two of our cocktail art. We have four more prints. We've got the Aviation, the Vucare, the Elk Zone, and my original, the See No Evil. All of them with the recipes and specs down below, including the bottles that I used. You can hang these up. You can put them together in a giant book, however you wanna do it. It's available. There is gonna be one more release that's down the road, but I'm excited for round two. And I hope you are as well. So there it is. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching this. I hope that you found this helpful. Thank you, Bright Sellers, for sponsoring today's film. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers.